Welcome into the steam room. Yes, sir. Nice towel. <laughs> Thanks a lot for checking us out. This is episode number nine of this podcast. Man, we are so close. If we get to double digits, that means we made it. No, we've already made it. <laughs> okay. okay. You know, 48 trillion 675,000 like folks it. don't I like lie. it. I like it. It's setting a record for subscribers to this. Um, Thanks a lot for being with us today. A uh, very special day, as a matter of fact, because 57 years ago today, Talk Charles to Wade Barkley was born. Yes, happy indeed. birthday to me, America. <laughs> I was going to say happy birthday to uh, you. You don't have to wish it to yourself. Oh, man, it's, it's, it's so 57 cool. 57 of those. Heinz 57 uh, yeah, of I, those bad boys. Which is the greatest condiment ever. Is it? You know I put Heinz 57 on everything, right? Not, not everything. Everything. Any, any, I wouldn't see it on cornflakes, nope, for instance. But on any meat that I eat. You got Heinz 57. Yes. All right. Any meats. Whether I, do like, I do like me some Heinz 57. I do. I do. Whether it's steak, chicken. I'm always. Fry, dip your fries in Heinz 57? No, no, no. Oh, no. come on. Nope, no, no, no. Not my fries. But any, Why? No, I just, I know it's just made for meat, Ernie. That doesn't make any sense. It, I'm just telling you. Ever had A1 on fries, too? A1 doesn't do it for me. Oh, I like A1. I got to have Heinz 57. A1 is all right. It's got that little after thing. Little going. tangy. Yeah, zestiness. yeah, yeah. But man, I, I put Heinz 57 on all my. So you're like a cheeseburger in paradise, like a Jimmy Buffett guy. That's right. right. Shout out to Jimmy like, Buffett. You One like of... yours with uh, lettuce and tomato <laughs> Heinz 57 and French Yes, fries sir. Potatoes. Yes, sir. Cold dish. Uh, what is it? Um, slice of pickle. A slice of pickle. Some kind of thing. I like mine with lettuce and tomato, Heinz 57 and French fry. Well, clearly yeah. you listen yeah, it to is. Jimmy Buffett. I do. I'm, I like a big, I'm a big parrot head. Hey, I tell you what. Anyway. It, it's really weird. Sometimes I'm in Vegas. Jimmy Buffett is there. Yeah. And you see all these old people walking around with parrot heads on. It's yeah, hilarious. Coconut bra yeah. and all that stuff. I, I, you're yeah. laughing so hard like... Oh, Jimmy's in town. It's impossible to go to a Jimmy Buffett concert and be in a bad mood. I, I agree. He, you know what? I actually met him before, and he's a really I, nice I, guy. I know him. I know him. Well, I know yeah, him a really well. nice man. Yeah. In fact, he did a video for uh, my daughter's wedding. Did he really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Introducing uh, the song that my daughter and I danced to. Was, little, was, was what? Little Miss Magic. Oh, my goodness. That's yeah, was very Little nice. Miss Magic. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, happy birthday. And we got, we have a, you're wondering why you're sitting in that chair today? Yeah. Because we needed some more room for your, for your birthday present. Okay. From uh, Mobile Nail Spa, La Bella Mobile Nail Spa. Wow. La Bella Mobile Nail Spa. You got you're getting a little mani pedi action here. Are we for your serious birthday. here? Come on in. Hey, how you doing? Don't be afraid to. Hi. What's your name? Nice to meet you, Charles. I'm Natasha. Natasha, Natasha, how you doing? Good. I'm Mr. Barkley. Charles, just Charles. Don't call me Mister. I'm getting a mani pedi for real. Yes. All right. Oh, this is gonna be. Are awesome. you gonna do it? Do it at the same time, mani and a pedi at the same time? Very good. Okay. All right. Well, I guess uh, this is the greatest country in the world, America. <laughs> <laughs> this is the great. You, you know what? So I don't know if this translates on a podcast. Uh, but I'll try to describe it for you as you like, maybe you're driving down the road and a, a table is now being brought out with, has a lot of plush towels. What's really, um, let me give a shout out to La Bella. La Bella mobile nail spa, not mobile. Nail no, no spa. mobile is it's a not city. An, it's not hey, an it, Alabama. It, 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 mobile thing. is a city. Hey, mobile is a city in Alabama. This is like heaven here. There's a shiny stone kind of thing being put out here. Like a prism kind of a thing, and here come. Uh, here's a, a this little is the greatest stool for the, the greatest truckster. country in the world. All right, all right. So as 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 they go through preparing you for this, um, uh, we got to do first of let, all. Let's do first of all. First of all, I could listen to that Mariah Carey song every day. First of all, I've met Rob Lowe a few times in my life. That's a pretty man. First of all, Christmas Carolyn is not a thing. First of all, I don't even think kale's a thing. First of all, I, I've i never used cologne. Oh, come on, I'm man. serious. First of all, Goodfellas is probably one of my top five movies. <laughs> you don't like Goodfellas? No, I don't. No, I just love talking to you, man, because you crack me up. So what's your first of all? Today? Well, first of all, I got two first of alls. It's, uh, I got a first see. of all and a second of all. <laughs> Okay, my first of all is to the Houston Astros. Mm -hmm. Hey, Houston Astros, apologize, say you're sorry, and don't talk about it anymore. 
Don't respond to people hating on you. Hey, people going to either forgive you or they're not. But to talk about this stupidity every single day, all you do is feed the beast. So apologize one time. Like they did the other day. No, 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 no. Not, no. They but did the other day. That was the worst apology. I know, but they but they tried to no. do what you're saying. They yeah. said apologize no. and then. Move, keep it moving. Yeah. But first of all, don't let the owner apologize anymore. Yeah. But I don't really think it impacted the yeah, game. But just apologize one time. One apology. Admit you were wrong. You got busted. But don't talk about it anymore. Tell the press. The press are idiots. They they need to feel 24-7 a day. If you talk about it every day, you just feed the beast. Apologize one time. One so now your answer, if I'm a reporter and, and it's I said, spring hey, training I, and I hey, go up, we've hey, apologized. Charles, what do you want to say? But what if somebody else has said something? No. You say, hey, look, Aaron Judge just weighed in. Yes, what do you think? That, and you, that, what do you say? That feed the beast. But what do you say? I'm not talking hey, about it? I, yes, exactly right. You're, you're not going to respond to it. I'm a, not going to respond. Because, because you're going to respond every day. Yeah. Because somebody's going, you got uh, Nick Markakis, you got Aaron Judge, you got Mike, Mike Trout. Trout. Yeah. You got everybody uh, imp, uh, opining every single day. Apo oh, opining. Opining, big word. Man, Chuckster. Hey, just apologize one time, man. Yeah. You, and you don't have to respond to every person who I got something to say. Y'all were 100% wrong. I think everybody knows that. But don't talk about it every single day because you feed the media beast. So that's my number one. Uh, just apologize one time. Listen, you can say I'm sorry or respond to these guys. That could go on the whole season. One apology. You're wrong. Let it go. And my second is, I'm so sad. Second of all. Second of all. I'm so sad. I cannot believe how many of my friends watch the damn Bachelor. And listen, stop lying. You're not watching it with your daughter, your girlfriend, or your wife. You watch The Bachelor. Uh, so I was apparently on The Bachelor. And Maddie, shout out to Maddie. Love you, Maddie Pruitt. Good luck. So I did a, a video. Actually, I did it so long ago, I actually had forgot about it, Ernie. Yeah. So they played it Monday night. And I uh, got uh, uh, one of those plush white towels is now being draped over yes, the uh, uh, lap I'm going of to Charles moist, Barkley, uh, we, as we say in, uh, and in a salon. bowl uh, of a I'm, bowl I'm of moist, solution has yeah, been yeah, placed I'm, on uh, his uh, right quad. Moist, I'm wetting my cuticles and to soften them up. Is, is uh, Natasha? Is that how wetting the cuticles, or or do you have a more? This is what you call a hand bath. A That's right, hand, a bath. hand bath. A hand yes. bath. Okay, I never well, thought both, I'd be. Okay. Yeah. Watching Charles get a hand bath. Oh on a yes, podcast. Ernie. I do this every Thursday. I really Ernie. never thought. I cannot that I believe. Be so that. I was actually supposed to go this, go do this when I left the, the podcast. Uh -huh. So this actually saves oh, me a lot killing, of time. Killing a couple of birds. I'm killing two birds one with stone. one stone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so what's your bottom line on second of all with a bachelor? Just people I, admit they watch it? Just admit. Don't lie. Say, I, I had a couple guys say, oh, I watch it with my daughter. Stop lying. Or I watch it with my wife or girlfriend. They're lying. You just watch The Bachelor. Okay. So just stop lying. But I, I cannot believe how many texts that I got, Ernie. It was unbelievable. Somehow. I was sitting, I was sitting around <laughs> minding my own business, and my phone started when have you? When up. do you ever mind your own business? Well, it was Monday night, and we had just come off the All-Star weekend, and I'm like, God, I can't believe it. My phone just starts going crazy. And my daughter says to me, and I know she watched those crazy reality shows, which drives me crazy, I might add. Um, and I'm like, she said, Dad, why didn't you tell me you were going to be on The Bachelor? She said, this is two times you've made my life miserable. You didn't tell me you were going to be on Ellen and The Bachelor. <laughs> and I'm like. You were great on Ellen, by the way. I think, you know what's so funny? I, it made me feel proud, though. My daughter actually wanted to watch me on television. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Wow. Everybody wants to watch you on television. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, nice. They try. don't have to be kin. Uh, anyway, I don't think I don't think we've heard the last about that Bachelor episode, by the way. That's just a little foreshadowing of what's coming oh, up a little later goodness. in the show. I like the word foreshadow. Meantime, uh, we're gonna take a break, and then the celebration of Charles Barkley's fifty seventh birthday will continue with a special guest. Uh oh. Next. We welcome you back inside the Steam Room and Spa. It is it is the Steam Room podcast, but it's also a spa This is today. a very nice TNT uh, Turner. Oh, we can't say Turner anymore? Warner Media. Warner Media. Thank you. It's a nice gift birthday present. La Bella Mobile Nail Salon. Natasha is about to begin the 
manicure and uh, latrine. 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 Latrine is about, well, she's already working on Chuck's puppies, and those things are something to see right now. I tell you what, you got nothing to, you got nothing to clip on that big toe. Hey, well, there is the no nail about, on there, hey, man. The best thing about my feet, I yeah. work with Shaq. Yeah. So I will never yours have, will always look better than uh, his. I might always look better than his feet. Wow. Yeah. All right. Those are some loud clippers you got going on there. All right. So anyway, but do your thing. So um, we have a special guest for you for Uh-oh. your birthday. Special guest, are you on the line? I'm on the line, and I'm in need of a steam room because I have no voice left from All-Star Week in my greatest imitation of my man, Charles Wade Barkley. It sounds Chuck more like, you know it sounds like the Kembe Matumbo. Uh, who is this? It's Will Bond. Hey, Will, <laughs> Mike Will Bond, the Godfather. <laughs> What's happening? Happy What's happening, birthday kid? Hey, man, I, I, I'm, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. We had a great time on Waddle and Civvy last week in Chicago. We did. We did. Uh, the, the Godfather, I call him the Godfather. Oh, yeah. No, well, that's, that's, that's very kind. I, I sound like the Godfather. I sound like Marlon Brando right now. <laughs> hey, I, that's I, not I, a bad I, thing. I, listen, I took I took uh, the Charles Barkley uh, All Star pattern too far. It sounds like this it, man. First, this is the first year I have heard you have a voice all the way through All Star Weekend. Well, I I've been. I, I, I was forbidden to smoke cigars more than one night. Okay. I, 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 our friend Dave Flom took care of me at the Clayton, and uh, I had a, a great night. Great, with, it? Yeah, it was, oh, it's, it's awesome. So me and Dr. J went there one night, and that's the only night that I could smoke. Name, I, don't, I can't smoke every night because I always lose my voice if I do it more than once. Name drop number one of this episode of the yeah, Steam Room. A, but, but that's Ernie. You know that's a great name. That all without to drop. W- without question. Uh, hey, hey, Michael. I. Uh, Number one, what what took the what took its toll on you and your voice from All Star Weekend? Well, you know what I mean, Ernie. This is you know my hometown, and I said yes to everything I was asked by the network and the city and family and other stuff. You know, friends. I, I said yes to everything going in, and I just remember thinking on Tuesday before, so over a week ago. I remember thinking, uh oh, this is not this is not the wise thing to do, even though it's gonna be fun getting through it all. And there were some curves I was thrown along the way. Um and I it was the time of my life. I, I, I got to uh host a panel that President Obama a fireside chat he put together right. with Chris Paul, Kevin Love and uh Giannis. And we had a great time doing that. Um and that was you know Added on to, I found out in my own hometown, I, I, I um, you know, reached the Basketball Hall of Fame with a with the Gowdy Award there with as a Kurt Gowdy, the Kurt Gowdy Award winner. Yes, and uh, with Mike Breen uh, as the Kurt Gowdy Award winner too. One of us for print, one of us for broadcast media. i would going back to my print days. You and Charles are old enough to remember when I actually worked <laughs> like that for a living. <laughs> Yeah, I knew it was a busy week for you when you couldn't be there for that. And uh, yeah, but co- I, 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 congratulations I to you, man. I did yeah. Stephen A's show, and I did Rachel's show, and I loved it. And, and Charles knows how much, you know, Wild and Sylvie for me, because that's the thing I do here in Chicago. I'm still here. That, that means a lot to me uh, personally in, in a way that it doesn't, you know, it's not just professional. I love those guys professionally, I, and, and I know Charles loves doing that show, too. We did it together. Last week, um, I, I just, I, you know, I probably said yes to too many things. I'm glad I said yes to all of it. But, oh, I mentioned I had to beat Stephen A. in the celebrity game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was actually going to say that to you. Can you, because uh, that was my question. You just stole my thunder. Can you really believe how whiny Stephen A. has been about <laughs> you beating him in, in the Chuck, basketball started, celebrity game? Chuck, as you know, he started like three days in advance saying that the league had stacked my team against him. I said, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that whining and complaining. But he's been, you know, he had to stay in character, I think. And so he did. And coming and, and, and those guys heard him talking that study. They're like, okay, we're going to take Steve. We're going to show Stephen A. how stacked this team is. Uh, so it was, it was, it was just. It's, it's one of the more fun weekends of my life. Uh, I can't even call it a weekend because, Chuck, you and I did Wild and Sylvia on Wednesday. Yeah. 
I think, yeah. A week ago, um, God, it's Thursday already. I'm more than a week ago. So I'm, I'm, I got to get this voice back because Tony can just scream at me, and I got, I can't fight back if I, if I stay like this. How'd you like the All Star game this year? I liked the fourth quarter. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Is the fourth quarter enough to say that was an A plus game? I think, or A game. I think most people say yes. I know Tony Kornheiser does, and I haven't. I've been out of it, so I haven't been able to hear you guys yet. Um, other than right after the game, Chuck. But I. I still want – I think there's a, a way out there, a game out there to be had, a matchup that would captivate people. If you only do it for five years, just do it for five years. But right now, if you put a world team out there against the U.S. team, the world team, look at the world team. That would have Giannis, Embiid, Ben Simmons, Luka Doncic, um, Siakam. That could be your starting lineup right there. Mike, I've been I've been uh, campaigning for that for the last two or three years. I think the and I think we should make it a winner take all. Let's say a million dollars to charity. Ooh, that's pretty good. I you mean, know, I mean, like, like a win, 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 like I say, yeah. I mean, last, the, the fourth quarter was amazing the other day, and that was only for two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. But if you give a million dollars away to world against the United States. I think it, it's a winner take all. I think it could be right a really now, awesome thing. To do it because you got you got so many talented players from around the world, like a guy like Jamal Murray, who oh, I, I didn't mention Jamal Murray and Jokic. Actually, okay, so uh, listen, just, we just that's eight dudes right there. Hey, let me tell you something. I actually think the the world team would be favored over the United States team, to be honest with too. you. I do, too. And maybe they don't want to – I don't know. I can't imagine that the league office think, would think of that. I, it, it, there's just no reason not to do it. And you would have a level of interest that is not – look, I'm glad it was, t- it was very clever, smart, sensitive uh, to tie it to Kobe. But what, what would be more observing of Kobe than international basketball? I mean, he, he represented international basketball as well as anybody that we've had, I don't know, in, in, in the last 30 years. So what would be more? How you, can, you can't observe Kobe. You don't need a gimmick. You don't need to gimmick up that game. You know if you put the world team out there against a U.S. team, that that is going to, that's going to bring out the effort, the competitiveness, the pride uh, in everybody, I would think. But I, I, I'm glad to hear you say it because I – I needed to hear this from somebody who has been in in global basketball at the highest level, and obviously you have. It would uh, it would be a nod not only to Kobe, it would be a nod to David Stern as well yeah. uh, when you make it something Absolutely. that's a, yeah. like a, the, the global impact of the game. Um, did uh, did Aaron Gordon get robbed again? Uh, probably. The thing is, but but it, he they weren't trying to. We all you know you know what they were trying to do. They were. They were trying to keep it tied and go one more dunk. Um, What's wrong with two trophies, Mike? What's wrong with two trophies? I, that's what I said. It, first of all, I wouldn't have gone to extra dunks. I mean, you don't want to get these guys hurt. Just I would have called it after the regulation uh, number, that last dunk, and they were even. That's it, two trophies. And so I, I know what they were trying to do. It failed. But I also thought that Connaughton had a dunk where the only person who knew fully what seemed to know, seemed to know, what he did in real time was, was Candace Parker. Because you can see Candace's face, like, like he, pointed, he, he tapped the backboard. Right. I, I wonder, I didn't get a chance to talk to those guys. I, know, I talked to Connaughton briefly afterward. Like, I didn't know if everybody caught that subtlety in live time, to, in time to vote. But I, I don't know. I... I because they were trying to do the right thing, I don't want to say he was robbed, but yeah, going over, going kind of over and through Taco Fall, you know, even if he wasn't his full seven five at the leap at the clearance, he was still about six ten. That's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it, it was interesting. I was like, if you go back and I said look at it. That was his lowest dunk of the night, jumping over a seven six guy. That's why I think a lot of people are like, wait a minute, out of all these dunks tonight, y'all said him jumping over Taco Fall was the worst dunk of the night. That's why I thought he got robbed. I mean, yeah. whether you yeah. thought he would, and, and Derrick Jones was fantastic, but like you gave the lowest score of the night 
when this guy jumps over a seven six guy. That's right, Chuck. You can't, you can't, you can't have that. Hey, and, and, if, and if you're looking for ways to try and just extend it with the score, then you should just give it, give two trophies. Who's going to object to that? Yeah. Hey, my thing is is this, Michael. I said you could turn this thing into a horse game or a pig game on the dunk contest. You got your four guys right there. Here's my dunk. You got to do it. If you can't, you get a letter. And and Kenny says, no, 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 because you got one foot dunkers and two foot dunkers. And I say, I don't care about that. I said, some guys can jump higher than other guys. They're still all in the same dunk contest. But that's that's my that's my thing. Here's my <laughs> dunk. You try to do it. Okay, you got a letter. Next guy up. And then everybody's going to get a chance to go first. So if you're a one foot dunker, you're you're going to get you're going to get a chance to do something that the two foot dunker behind is going to have to try. I'm just saying right. it take it would take the judges out of it. You wouldn't need judges all night. You don't need judges for the for the skills. You don't need judges for the three. You don't need judges for the dunk. That's a great point, Ernie. Let me ask you this: Do kids play horse anymore? Like I'm thinking about this, even though I'm the father of a basketball little. 12-year-old basketball lunatic, I don't play horse with him anymore. I, mm. I did when he was five, six, seven, just picking up a ball and getting into it. And now that he's playing on, you know, teams and travel teams and all that, I don't ever see them play horse. And maybe it's just become extinct. I mean, we played horse. You, 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 I mean, I learned how to play from my father and my uncles, and they played horse. That's how they introduced you to it in large part. And then we played horse all my life. And now, Ernie, that's the first time I've heard anybody say horse in, like, I don't know, five years. I know. Are, people, are these kids playing horse? It's, I, I, well, I, I don't think anybody does. I love well, playing horse. Well, and, okay, hit this shot from behind the backboard. Okay, yeah. bounce this one from the, from the foul line. Yeah, it was, I, loved, I loved playing horse. Yeah, but these kids today, number one, you got to say Matthew's name, Mike. It's all right to say Matthew's name. And Matthew Wilbon. Matthew, young Matthew Chuck, Wilbon. I mean, because I couldn't get to it. He, he, he is, is in sixth grade. And for the second straight year, he won. He's the point guard. His team won the, uh, the postseason tournament in, in Bethesda. Second straight year. I, I, I got a text with a picture of him holding the trophy. Nice. When I was half out of it uh, yesterday afternoon. And I'm like, my goodness, this is you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm proud of him. But, yeah, that, that's the – Chuck, the first money I lost, and Ernie, the first money I lost was to Matthew. I said, you can't hit this shot from behind the basket. That's, that's going to be the, you know, my crowning achievement in filling out horse. And he not only did he hit the shot and keep me from winning, but he took 100 bucks off me. That's the essence of, of, of ball, isn't it? Yes, it is. Hey, Mike, you know, you go back, I think about uh, David Dupree – uh, I think about Roscoe Nass, the late great Roscoe Nass. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably like one of the reasons I call you the Godfather. You're like one of the first guys who now now you get to mentor all these young black guys. How much of a responsibility do you take that, uh, Chuck? As seriously as I take anything I've done professionally. Um. Because you mentioned the two two people that helped raise me in this, and Ernie, the first time I ever had an extended away from the court conversation with Charles was in Philadelphia with David Dupree one night after a playoff game, and we had this will tell you how the times have changed for all of us. Chuck, we had it at TGI Fridays, not far <laughs> from the Spectrum. Oh yeah, and you know I I'd like to think I learned. You know, I would to let if, to disappoint David Dupree would be like, and I, he was my my mentor, but my coworker for so many years at the Washington Post. To let him down would just be like letting my father down. I, I just couldn't stand the notion of it. The, the the bar was high. How you treated people, the conversations you had with people, your work and what you wrote and how you stood by it, but also took accountability if something was say just wasn't as right as you thought it should be. And Roscoe, the same way. Um, and, I, and, and so those guys represent every, you know, I, I haven't talked to David yet. I got to call David Dupree and, and thank him. I did. I thanked him on SportsCenter the other night. He was one of the people that I thanked. And uh, at Charles, as, as are you. And I, you know, just learning how to conduct yourself. How do you 
walk around a locker room? How do you behave with coaches? And I was the first time I ever met Gene Shue. I was with David Dupree. He introduced me to Gene Shue, and we sat again in the spectrum before a game, and just, I just listened. And I was like, wow, man, this is how grown people have conversations <laughs> about basketball. <laughs> and so now, Charles, I, you know, sometimes I get pissed. I, I mean, I want guys to dress a certain way. Yeah. I want them to behave a certain way. I, I, I mean this. And everybody can say, well, you, you know, you're going too old school. Maybe. And I have to adjust my thinking sometimes. But I want them to um, – I want them to, to, to clear the bar as it was set by David Dupree. I mean, Larry Whiteside has covered the Celtics, and there are other, other brothers who have done this um, as well. But, you know, when you mention David to me, he's the gold standard. Uh, and Ralph Wiley. Yes, the late great you know, Ralph Wiley. They got it. You know, the, here's where they – Charles and Ernie, when, when I first started writing a column, I thought I was too young to write a column. I was 30. I thought you needed to be 35 years old. You needed to live a little bit first, more than I had. I, needed. I was, wasn't married yet, didn't have a child. I just thought you needed to have life experiences. But the Post made me a columnist. And the first few columns I wrote, each one of them, I would get a voicemail back in the old voicemail days when you had <laughs> tape. And they would be like 10 minutes long from Ralph Wiley. And Ralph would just call me up uninvited. And he would say, hey, listen, I just read the column you wrote on Elvin Hayes and Wes Unsell. And you know what? Here's what you should have done better. Here's something you should have thought of. Here's what you should have. And I was like, who is this dude? Who is this dude calling and just bleeding all over my column? What is up with that? And I was offended, of course, the first time and the second time and third time. And by the tenth time, I I was looking for that guidance. He was doing nothing but holding me to a standard to make me better because at that point in time, there were five black colonists in America. How sad is that? Yeah. We're talking 1990, Chuck. 1988, anyway. Yeah. Well, almost 1990. And Ralph and David and Roscoe, they understood that, you know, one of us could not fail. Brian, the late Brian Burwell, who obviously you knew well. As oh, well, yeah. Both of you knew. Those are two great names, Brian Burwell and Ralph Wiley. Those are two yeah, great names. To, the, the bar had to be cleared. The bar had to be cleared. You were not going to mess that small fraternity up. That's and a, so we couldn't afford it. What a, that's a wonderful story, and I think it's a great lesson, too, Michael, for, uh, for young journalists, too, that, uh, look, if somebody's – look, we see it on our show all the time when Charles and Shaq and Kenny, you know, we'll look at a guy's game, not with the intent of, of tearing it apart, but trying to get the most out of that player and saying you could, you could be an even better player if you do this. It's the same way when and he's picking apart your column. He's trying to, he's trying to make the best Michael Wilbon he possibly can. Yeah. So, yeah. so that kind of stuff right there, that's invaluable. That's I it mean, is, and I, and 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 I thank Charles for bringing those guys their their names up because, I you know I mean they're, they're you know I always hear I always just loved it when Charles would say in real time he didn't wait years he would he would say I you know I thank Julius Doc Dr J and Moses Malone and the guys that Charles would talk about setting the bar you know it, it, that's important it's, it's more than important it's necessary. But I tell you what scary is, and I, John Thompson told me this, I don't know, maybe about 15 years ago, what worried him about moving forward in the culture. And it's not just sports where this happens, but it's everything. People don't know the difference now between being coached and just criticized. And any bit of coaching or instruction they take as criticism, well, damn, I mean, we, people got to get past that. How Mike, that, improve, that's the toughest thing. That. That's the toughest thing about our job. Instead of like, you know, when Doc, well, I remember the first time I asked Moses when I, why I wasn't getting to play. He told me I was fat and I was lazy. And, and it hurt my feelings. But then I had to sit back. And Moses made me lose 50 pounds and become Charles Barkley. Wow. And and uh, I, say, I saw Dr. J uh, when I was in Chicago. Dr. J told me like, hey, 
this is professional basketball, you need to dress a certain way. You can't wear warm-up suits all the time. And he made me dress better. And what you said a few minutes ago, like, when we tell young guys today, they take it as criticism and say, like, no, we want you to be the best you can be. That's what drives me crazy sometimes. It, it doesn't. And, Charles, I, what, that's one reason why. And I don't know he got the full lesson yet, but I appreciate his reaction. And I told Joel, I told Joel that when I saw him uh, the night after or whatever that you and Shaq were on him, that, that I mean, that is, that's the, first of all, that is the reason I, I've always stood in front of both of your lockers forever when you all were playing and now want to hear all your opinions subsequently in, 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 after your careers because that's the expertise that you have gained. Not, ex, not just experience, it's expertise. And the people are so upset with that, man. I, I, I'm not going to mention the player's name, but there's an all-star in the NBA right now who was mad at Magic for years because Magic dared to offer a constructive view yeah. of, 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 of his ability to play point guard and what he was doing. And it was like, it was scientific. You know, you, when you hear Magic talk about playing point guard, it's like, just take out a notebook and start writing <laughs> stuff down and shut up. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly I mean, right. If, you, if you object, you, what you got to say is, Look, I'm listening. Now I may have to, and, and and Magic was not, you know, Magic when he when he's critical, he's not, he not Magic is not like the rest of us who can be dogmatic about it. It's just not in him. Yeah, it's just not in Irvin. And so this guy has been upset, as far as I know, is still upset because Magic said, "Hey, he's not going to be able to win, and he hasn't until he perhaps incorporates this." And man, I would be sitting there, and I'm like, "This is I'm getting." I always felt talking about people I owe, that I got a graduate course in just learning about the game because I, for eight years, and, and we'll probably still work together some more. We did it once already this year. Eight years of sitting with Magic every, for so many games in my life, Saturday nights and Sundays on the road and, and sitting next to him. I mean, how, if, if I feel that way, how could a player not feel that way? And so it's, it's, I think that, Charles, when you say how – how do I take that responsibility, man? That is uh, something. I, there's some kids who, young guys who seek it out, men and women, and 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 a various. You know, now we have a luckily we have a situation where I mean, people, people, uh, who, you know, it looks like the UN, where people who come to ask me stuff, and I'm trying. You know, I try, I really try to pay attention to who's listening, and who's not, and I think it's been pretty well received, and I know I can't be as gruff as. As you know, I can be. I can't. I can't be that. Um, and I've learned some patience being a father. Matthew will probably say I, I ain't patient at all. But, <laughs> but I, I think Charles, that may be um, the most important part of sort of my responsibility, other than to directly to ESPN at this point. That that may be it. Michael Wilbon, we appreciate you calling in and. Uh spending part of Chuck's 57th birthday with him. Thank and, you, my uh, brother. Always listen, good talking to you, man. Ernie, is, is great hearing you and talking to you. And listen, Charles has helped me celebrate several birthdays. We, we were able to do several of those in Arizona. I'm sorry I'm not around to, in person to do that. I, 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 um, I'm glad the season is starting back up. I'm glad I'm going to get to hear you guys. Chuck, you know, I, I love you. I owe you. And... Um, I appreciate everything, my brother. Everything. I appreciate you, brother. I love you. Thanks for calling in. All right. Talk. See you soon. See All you right. soon. Thanks for coming into the steam room, Michael, and uh, appreciate you keeping your towel on. You know, he's been a, a great, great friend to me, not not just the basketball stuff. Obviously, he did uh, a, a couple of my books with me, but just to have somebody to bounce things off of. You talk and, about a voice of reason. Yes. One of the reasons I love Pardon the Interruption mm -hmm. is because him and Tony, number one, have great chemistry, obviously. They're, they're great friends. But also, we live in a society where everybody on television is trying to say something to get people to watch their show or click on. The one thing I love about their show is, like, 
No, they they're not gonna do that. They're like, oh, this is my honest opinion. It's fair and it's balanced. This is uh, like, no, we're not gonna just say stuff to get people to click on. You take this side, I'll take this side. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just and sometimes like, they'll agree. Yeah, and I, other I, times they won't, and it's fine. And, but. and 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 that's what I love when like, I hate shows where like I'm just gonna disagree with you because it makes good TV. Like, no, nah, we we agree on some things, and then when they honestly disagree. It's like it's a, it's like okay no no he really disagrees with your point, and I, I, listen I, I just love this show and I appreciate Mike taking the time. Uh, Charles' right foot has now been lifted <clears throat> out of the water and uh, onto the left quad. Of There's nothing. Uh, La Trine. And this, this, you you've gone to a different place in the course of this steam room. You are relaxed. You, oh, Ernie, I mean, let me this, tell you something. This I, Manny Petty has got you in a good place right uh, now. Ernie, I do this every week, mm-hmm. and it puts me in a good place. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I, it, this is a great – and so the thing is uh, I'm so glad they're here because, number one, they're going to save me half a day when I was going to leave here. Yeah, but, so now you can just go back to the hotel and fall asleep. Well, no, I'm actually going to go and get some soul food. Okay. Um you know, I go two places. Yeah, K and K and uh, uh, Walters. Right here in Atlanta. Shout out to Walters and K and K. Go to Mary uh, Max too every uh, now. Oh, oh, I know. I order Mary Max at work. Yeah, uh, I, I had order, that. I had that the other night. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do. I order Mary Max at work. <laughs> No. Uh, I actually have never been to Mary Max. I only do that uh, in the studio every Thursday. Mary Max. Okay. So that's just in case. Oh, can you I give folks- a shout out, Ernie? <laughs> your show dude uh to the people at a leave uh-huh. so i said something about a leave our first show they sent me a bunch of goodies oh yeah thank you a leave no ernie i said something about a leave uh the first show we did uh-huh. so this is the pain the pain yes they sent me some goodies to the crib <laughs> so thank you a leave thanks a leave and yeah. thanks to uh la bella Mobile nail spa, putting Chuck in a good spot, and we're all we're all grateful, aren't we, crew? Yes, we yes. are. We'll be back with more in a second. We're back inside the steam room, and we are joined by uh, a regular uh, sure. member of the crew, Tim Kiley, the longtime producer inside the NBA, now the, uh, what, the coordinating producer. Like, oh, yeah, they make it up. I mean, yeah. as they go along, the executive you know, producer in charge of short errands, you know, yeah. whatever. Uh, and he comes on. Oh, he's and, a good personal friend of Dan Marino. They play together. Yeah, school. yeah. And and he gives us some local news and some off the wall kind of stuff. So um, so what do you got this time? Well, I, first of all, I just wanted these ladies are performing a miracle, and I just wanted to know Ernie your thoughts on them working on Shaq's feet. Oh, my goodness. This is Latrine and Natasha from La Bella Mobile Nail Spa. We, and the Chuckster is so relaxed. Uh, he has been put into a, a into coma. A, oh, and but these, yeah, I don't think, I don't think you'd want to see any. With a gift. We wouldn't want to see Shaq's no, feet on up. this one. What's this? And Ernie, I think you'll remember the technique he used. Maybe Ernie should open it. Don't want to mess up your nails, Chuck. Yeah, Ernie, go ahead and open that for me, please, sir. Fine, gentlemen. What do we got here? I'll open this one for you, Chuck. This is from Maureen. Oh, some Old Spice. Classic Old well, now, Spice. Now, Chuck, what was your description of how you handle cologne? I spray it in the air and walk into it. Yeah. <sighs> That's beautiful. Uh, well, happy birthday, Chuck. This is a little bladder support from CBS. That's very nice. That's Isn't that thoughtful? That's thoughtful, TK. Thank you, Ernie. You think of everything. Let me see. I know. I know. Well, so, th- so this will stop me from getting up and using the bathroom all night? Well, you'll have to try it out and tell me, Chuck. Well, I don't it says know. It helps support a good night's sleep. Well, that's what they tell me. But it looks like you're already on your way to a good night's sleep. Oh, I'm a, your eyes are not open, you know. You know, I love this thing. It says <laughs> they got a picture of a pill that's an actual size. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we know. Uh, we know. So, Ernie, so, going back to the why is this a dietary shows, supplement? Give it a whirl, Chuck. If you're 57, what do you got to lose? Uh, okay, helps control. Black. And by the way, I think Heinz should send you a Pittsburgh company should send you a case of Heinz 57. Uh, that's some good stuff, brother. I know it. 
Like, what you got, TK? Uh, Ernie, going back to the reality uh, stuff, you guys were talking about The Bachelor. We you know how much yes. everybody enjoyed that. There's a there's a backstory behind that. What do you mean? The kid is a pilot. His name they call him Pistol Pete. Yeah. And he took or Pilot Pete, what are they? Or Pilot Pete. Nice. Pilot Thank Pete you, Weber. Or, sorry, yeah. Pilot Pistol. And Chad's Pruitt's daughter is Madison. Yeah. So he took her to the arena, or she took him to the arena. Yep. And he's an assistant coach under Bruce Pearl. Correct. Yes. Right. And they Shout played out Bruce Pearl. And they played Charles's message, which was basically threatening the kid to be nice to the Auburn alum. Yeah. And this kid, Pilot Pete. Sorry. Thank you, Ernie. Did not know who Charles was, and Twitter wasn't happy with it. What? We're out here in Auburn. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> hey, Peter and Madison, welcome to Auburn, greatest university in the world. Have a great time with the Pruitt family. But let me tell you something. You better treat that girl right. She's part of the Auburn family. We always stick together. War down, Eagle. <laughs> I love that. What? She had to whisper in his ear. Are, are you serious? And say, that's Charles Barkley, and he still didn't know who it was. It, this is after walking past your statue <laughs> to enter the building. Uh, no, dump this loser, Maddie. <laughs> dump this loser, Maddie. Uh, Ch Why Chuck, did Madison I, I, need to tell Peter who Charles Barkley oh, is? Oh, no, no, Madison. Did she think he Maddie, doesn't Maddie, know? dump this loser, girl. Come on now. Honestly, Charles Barkley has been the highlight of this season so far. Hashtag The Bachelor. Wait. I'm surprised you would be on reality TV. Well, I was doing anything for Maddie. This dude didn't know who I was? Apparently. No idea. Oh, my God. Pilot Pete. A jump shooting team cannot win The Bachelor. Charles Barkley. Hey. Probably. This dude, so, Chuck, I'm, not, I'm this guessing this is not going to be a long-term relationship. This dude's got to go. <laughs> This dude got a goat, Matty. Matty, but, dump this. Ernie, but you, noticed, you, know, you, know, you noticed his eyes have opened. And oh, I know. No, the, the dude didn't know who I was. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, gall. He, didn't, he didn't walk past the, the statue. Humanity. But you know, what, you know what Auburn fans are now referring to the, the Bachelor curse because you That's appeared it. on The Bachelor That's it. and then my dogs beat Auburn by 10 last like night. Like a yeah, drum. I, you know, I, I thought you would wait the to... The Bachelor curse. No, this is the end of the I birthday. Thought, I, I, we had a bet last night. Was you? Me and my friends looked at that score. Was you going to do it on the podcast or wait till we got on the well, show? Well, I wasn't going to do it on the podcast, but it just plays into this whole Bachelor curse thing. But this wasn't just a loss, Ernie. This was a beatdown. Oh, first of oh, all, look, I, the, my they, dogs have struggled in the conference. Okay, yeah, but yes, I, I I appreciate the effort last night and the win over over Auburn. I, I, can win. we get back to this dude? Don't know who I am. <laughs> big win by double digits over Auburn. This dude didn't have no. Idea I couldn't who get I, was. I couldn't get a Georgia cap in time, Ernie. So I wanted to rep you with oh, Mar your Marist Marist High School. That's a good fit on there. Clearly, <laughs> y'all are glossing over the fact that this guy had your no daughter's idea who I was. Marist softball hat. <laughs> <laughs> on your noggin. <laughs> on my coconut. Gee. Hey, Maddie. More reality TV. You up for more reality yeah, TV? Yeah, let's go for some more uh, reality TV. So, this is the power. We'll come get back to people who know who you are. Okay, thank um, you. Um, You made a pitch to get on Ellen, and bang, you're on Ellen. Yes. Right? And you apparently, were very good, and I'm glad you, yes. they scared you, too. Uh, I really, Apparently, yeah. you're just gall and uh, inability to stop begging you ask Guy Fieri, do we have that sound, Mike? You know, I could probably get you a spot on a reality show if you're interested. Guy Fieri's Triple D show. Guy show I watch religiously. That's the reason I'm a fat guy. I like food. Some of the stuff those people be eating, like you have to be really damn hungry to eat that. <laughs> so uh, I'm told that uh, Mr. Fieri fired back. What we're trying to do is get Charles to take over Diners, Drivers, and Dives. I think that's really the idea. I don't know what car he's going to drive because the 68, of course, is going to go with me. But I think that he's got the palate, the energy, the attitude, and probably the career change opportunity. I mean, or maybe diversify the portfolio. Um, but he's a welcome addition. And we've talked about this. Every time we do this, we talk about it. Where are you, man? Uh, you know... I watch that show religiously, and every time I see Guy, I said, man, let me on an episode. Let me on an episode with him because, man, I, it, it's amazing to me. I watched two shows, Guy's show and Andrew Zimmern, Bizarre Foods. Ooh. I love Andrew Zimmern's Bizarre Foods, but uh, I, I, like some of the, 
the question he was talking about, some of the stuff that people eat in different countries or in different states is unbelievable. But, but Chuckster, <laughs> you like those shows. I do. But then when it comes to what you eat, it's, it's like so boring a lot of times. Just give me a steak, Thank cook you, it Aaron. real well done. You know, it's like, Burn give me a potato, beans. give me have the... You show no adventurous side. Oh, would you no, eat? Would no. you, or you just delight in watching other people eat weird stuff? No, I, like I like when I'm watching uh, bizarre foods or, or or guys show. Like I'm first of all, I can't believe like they said they marinate stuff for like two days. Yeah. Or they they cook it for like eight to ten hours. Like that's amazing to me. That that the. That it's amazing to me because like when you go to a restaurant you just order your food you have no idea and then they're putting like 10 different ingredients in there right and i'm amazed at that at that chuck i heard you tried a chicago dog and didn't like it i didn't because they put a bunch of crap on it they had how a could you did that like is a chicago, chicago dog. dog yeah that, yeah 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 okay okay nobody wants a pickle and peppers and crap on their hot dog that stuff we, we just want now. onions and chili it doesn't like, get any better I, than that. I got a side with a Chuckster on this one, TK. I'm not a big Chicago dog kind of guy. Come on, uh, uh, TK. I'm a, I'm a spicy put, mustard and relish guy. Uh, That's uh, sourkraut? Uh, yes, on a, sauerkraut. On a bratwurst. All right. Bratwurst, yeah. bratwurst, bratwurst yeah. not a hot I can, dog. Yeah, yes. But like I say, uh, I don't want, uh, like you had a Chuck, pickle. you put Heinz 57 on a hot dog? No, you just put chili and onions on a hot dog. What about mustard? Uh, I'll put, if, if I'm if I don't have any chili or or onions, I'll put mustard and ketchup on it. But you said you didn't use ketchup. You use Heinz fifty seven. No, no, no. On I, meat. I, no, uh, do, uh, hot oh, uh, hot dog is meat. Caught. Okay, that's Busted. like a hot dog is technically. <laughs> what if it's an all beef wiener? Uh, <laughs> so Ernie, uh, I don't put Heinz fifty seven <laughs> on my hot dog, but I put it on my any type of chicken or steak. And I would like to make a correction, Ernie, before you guys throw me out of here. Too late. It's actually, no. been, it's actually been three name drops. Dr. J, Jimmy Buffett, and now Guy Fieri. Yeah. So well, we, the, it's not a huge see, day for see, name see, dropping. You know, see, but, you know. well, see, this is what annoys me about you mere mortals. It's not my <laughs> fault I hang out with other celebrities. You seen these feet it, and you're it, immortal? It, you know, I'm just saying, though, y'all are nobodies. So y'all don't hang out with other celebrities. I hang, uh, celebrities hang out with other celebrities. I'm not talking about you ladies. I meant TK. He's, he's a male mortal. Is it, uh, it, wait like, a minute. It's, out of all the name <laughs> dropping I've done, it only counts like half the times you and drop Dan Marino. That's fine. But do you know that they just passed a law that in Illinois that says it's pot's legal and it looks like you brought a little back with you from Illinois. Wait no, no I, I told you. Pot, His eyes are barely open. Pot, uh, pot is very overrated. <laughs> uh, I've only did it five times. I told you. It just make you want potato chips. Uh, it don't do it. It don't take you to a different place. Uh, it's just like, I'm like, I didn't get, my friends like, it was great. I'm like, dude, I just want potato chips. What, what year was that? I haven't had pot since the 80s. The 80s were a good decade for Lay's. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, oh, we'll be back with more oh, oh, on the see, steam oh, room. See there. <laughs> <Bum, bum, bum. laughs> <laughs> uh, we're He's coming, got a million. We're coming back with the uh, Chuck's answering machine after this. We're back inside the steam room uh, where I've been watching the Chuckster on his 57th birthday uh, receive this Manny Petty. Oh, and as we call it where I'm from, Thursday. Yeah, this, the second toe on your right foot, yeah, the one Latrone is working on right now. Yeah. That thing has got like a 90 degree bend in it, that second Ernie, This toe. is what happens when you work for a living. Yeah. All of us haven't been blessed. My goodness, look at, th yeah, that that second toe uh, right there. All of there, us are not blessed to be a That sport. doesn't even do it justice. Hey, when I'm you see saying, it from my angle. Uh, I'm just saying, all of us haven't blessed oh to be just talk on television our yeah. whole life. Some of us had to run and jump for a living. <laughs> so you put stress on your on your toes yeah. when that, you're But running. you, you got to admit that second toe is pretty gnarly. Yeah, it is. Man alive. All right. Um, as you know, what what Cap, our our producer Michael Kaplan, has done, they put a uh, they put something out on social media, inviting folks to call Chuck's answering machine and wish you a happy birthday. And we had more than seven hundred calls no way yes wow and here are just uh here's a here are a few of them you've reached charles barkley leave a message america
First of all, Chuck, happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños, Sparkly. Happy birthday, man. The mound, the round mound of rebound. I just messed that up. I hope you have an amazing birthday, and I love watching you and all the guys, but especially you. Happy birthday, Chuck. You're my second most favorite player in the world. I just wanted to wish the greatest power forward of all time a happy birthday. But Tim Duncan's birthday is until April 26th, so I want to wish you a happy birthday for now. <laughs> I know it's Rihanna's birthday, too, but... I know you're getting up there in age, but you're looking good, you're looking handsome. I think that's all that matters. How old are you turning? 40, 50, whatever the hell you're turning. But happy birthday, man, from me and my lady. Happy birthday. I don't even know who you is. I hope the birthday's full of Krispy Kreme and Flex Tape products, such as Flex Seal, Flex Tape. I heard they got a new Flex Paste. My kids and I just wanted to wish you a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Barkley! Happy birthday! There were calls from all over the world. That's no exaggeration. Well, that was really sweet of you guys to do that. I want to thank every single person who called me or who tested me today. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. Uh, you know, I, you know, when you, I'm 57. I'm almost 60 years old. And, man, what an amazing life. I've been so lucky and blessed. Uh you know, you know, Ernie, growing up in my little hometown, I never expected my life to be like this, man. I'm just so lucky and blessed. I mean, you growing up in the projects of Leeds, Alabama, you're like, you're like, I just want to get the hell out of here. And now, 57 years later, to be who I am, and I got the greatest job. I mean, basketball has been amazing to me, but to have the job I have now, uh, you know, and, and I say it, Stupid, stupidly, I mean, I get paid to watch the greatest athletes in the world do their thing. Yep. I mean, it, it, like sometimes you have to pinch yourself. Number one, I played the game for 16 years, and that's a blessing. But now to come to work, and I said, it's like, wait, y'all going to pay me to watch the basketball <laughs> players? This is amazing. Yeah, we want you to talk a little bit about it too. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but watching, but, yeah, but, sure. I might go my whole life and never have a real job. Well, let's hope. Um, and I love the appreciation in your voice. And we have one other we have one other call on oh, on Chuck's answering this machine. This could be dangerous. No, this is not dangerous at all. This is, in fact, this is kind of uh, tells folks a lot about the Chuckster. Listen up. Hey, Chuck, this is Petty Officer Oglesby serving in the United States Navy. Quick story: I met you in the O'Hare uh, Airport about nine years ago. In Chicago, I was on my way to boot camp. You stopped me in a group of my friends and, and wished us nothing but the best. And I really appreciate that. I I tell that story just about every other day, every time I see you guys on uh, TNT. But round mound the rebound. Happy birthday, brother. God bless you. Keep doing what you do. Oh, that's awesome. You never know, Chuckster, the impact you're going to have for one little moment in your life. That's nine years ago, something you did at an airport. Uh, and you saw this guy, and you and you told him you appreciated him and and wished him the best. And that's something that uh, that one moment nine years ago he is he repeats that story time and time and time and time again. You know, Ernie. Obviously, we we we, we me and you we're in the airport a lot, and I fly back and forth every week. Anytime I meet a soldier, I always try to tell them thank you for what you do. You know, America is the Greatest place in the world, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But I've been around the world. This is by far, by far, the greatest place. And you know, in other countries, if you say something bad about the president or, or, or who run things, they can actually just kill you. <laughs> you just disappear. America is the greatest place in the world. And for these soldiers, when I meet them, male or female, I always acknowledge them and tell them thank you. One of the reasons I got involved with Wounded Warriors, because uh, we don't do enough for our veterans. Uh, if you get a chance, guys, always get involved with uh, Wounded Warriors and our vets, because you know our government does not do enough at all for Wounded Warriors or these veterans. Uh, so if you get a chance to say thank you to a veteran, always please do that. Excellent advice. And on that note, uh, 
we conclude the celebration of Chuck's 57th well, we're birthday. Not concluding anything, well, brother. we are on the Steam Room okay, podcast. Okay. We we encourage well, why, you. Well, you know, we we can't do like a double Steam Room. No, one's enough. I'm sorry, one budget. If y'all you, budgeted for one show. By the way, if you want to call and leave a message for Chuckster, or for or for me, um, 404-987-0330. 404-987-0330. Thanks to La Bella Mobile Nail Spa for coming by and pampering the Chuckster on his yes, 57th. Yes. And uh, you know what? Next time we hit double digits, it'll be episode oh number goodness, 10 of the digits. Steam Room. They said we'd never make it. Man, I cannot wait to see the number of subscribers. That's going to be in the gazillions. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>